I'm going to walk through step by step how I built this terrain and show you how to use some of the high field nodes. I'm going to go over several different erosions and compare them so you can understand how to control the erosion node by painting precipitation and changing the amount of water that erodes over time. So high fields begin with the height field node. So if you type HF, which is a shortcut for height fields, it will list all the height field node tools. So this is the one we start off with right at the beginning. So this is what the height field node looks like, which looks like a geometry plane, but that's a geometry plane in disguise. If you look carefully into this node, you'll see that it creates a height volume and a mask volume. So height fields are all about volumes. This height field is of grid spacing too, size 1000 by 1000. So basically, if you take a thousand, you divide it by two, because it's two grid spacings, you get 500. So a thousand divided by two is 500. So 500 by 500 by one. That's how you get this. Now, if I decrease this, if I decrease this by one, this becomes 1000 by 1000, obviously, uh, 1000 by 1000 by one. Obviously, because the, the grid spacing, the whole thing is the grid spacing. The whole 1,000 units is the grid spacing. If I continue to decrease the grid spacing value, the resolution of this uh, height field will continue to increase. So let's go and make it a half. So now we have 2,000 by 2,000 by 1. So it's, the grid spacing is getting smaller. If the size stays the same, and the grid spacing decreases, you get a higher resolution. That's because each grid spacing, that's, there's squares, there's units. So each grid spacing is like a unit. If this square unit gets smaller, obviously you can fit more squares onto this whole geometry. With more squares, you get more resolution. So you can think of it as uh, the screen on your monitor with more pixels, you have higher resolution. Now I want to turn this back to two. You need to be aware with more resolution, uh, the computation time for any operations on the height field will take longer. So that's why I'm going to leave it at two right now. This is a volume, but it looks like a plane, doesn't it? It looks like a, a polygon plane. But let's go back here. It's 500 by 500. So we know it's 500 grid spacing here, 500 grid spacing here by one. So it's flat, uh, a volume in the shape of a plane. So let's add some height field noise to it. So you type HF noise. That's this. This node displaces the flat height field with noise. This is a very simple noise. I just lowered the scale a bit and kept all the values, default values. I have that, this noise. Now I'm going to make another noise, but this time I changed the noise type to Manhattan Whirly. So I have this noise and I have this noise. The Whirly noise, I'm going to do something a little special, uh, a little different. I'm going to raise it up. So there's a height field transform. So there's a height field transform, just like you have a transform node in the SOP level. There's a height field transform. And what this does, it allows you to translate it from the X, Y, Z values. So I just offset the height. So I just made, raised it up a bit. This is the ground level uh, zero, zero position. And I raised it up. So this is the noise. This is the height field transform. So I have this, my noise number two and noise number one. Noise A and noise B. I take these two and I apply a height field layer 
The height field layer node is similar to the layers in Photoshop, where you can blend different images together using different modes. So there's this height field layer, which is this one. And what it does, it takes noise A, I feed it into the left input, which is asking for base terrain. Then I take noise B and I feed it to the second input, which is terrain to layer. So you can think of it as the Photoshop layering. You can, where you blend two images together. So that's what this is doing. It's blending two terrains together. And I'm going to unplug this first so this is blending this is the result of blending this terrain and this terrain together and we get this now the layer mode is using add so we're adding the two noises together we can you can subtract you can multiply which goes uh the values get really high maximum so this takes the maximum height of all the points uh, voxels or points or densities minimum and then blend or you can just choose how you want to blend it i want more of b or maybe i have more of a then this is all a this is all b this is uh this is in the middle some of a and some of b but i'm just going to choose add for right now now what if i don't want to add everything like I want to keep a lot of uh, a but I only want to add B I want to add noise B only on some parts of noise a now comes the masking height field masking so there's this just height field mask feature so that's this one Height field mask by feature. So what this does, it selects certain areas of this height field. It does not change the height field. So if we look at this, the original noise, and then we apply a height field mask. It selects, it's like selecting a certain area of, now I'm selecting uh, a certain height range. I want to affect these areas i select that so these are the only spots the red selected areas are the areas that i want to change the height field then i have a blur like i don't want it that sharp i don't want the change to be so sharp i want it to have a gradient so i blur it a bit so i apply a blur to it you can choose expand which will expand your selection or you can shrink it but blur it, it'll just blur it so it, there's a gradient gradient value i take this mask and i plug into the third input of the height field layer and what that does it will only combine noise it will combine noise a and b only on the selected mask area now since noise a is the base it will always be there and it'll take noise B and apply an operation to it only on the areas of the selected. So if we choose this, only the areas that was selected has changed. So this is what it looks before. This is after. This is the mask. So you can see that only those areas has changed. So that's how you use the height field layer. I go into more detail of the height fields mask by feature node in my other video, where I explain in detail how the ramp is used and how the values of the ramp in the mask node relates to the raw height values in the terrain. Please check that out if you're having trouble with the mask by feature node or if you want a better understanding of the height field nodes. Back to the height field layer. So that's how we got this layer. And that's how we combine these eight noise A and noise B together to get this height field layer noise. If you look carefully, this noise is now stretched up. It's all stretched. If you've done a little bit of uh, digital sculpting or, or 
uh, 3D modeling, you know that topology is very important and um, the resolution of your geometry is very important. When you're adding noise, because this stretches the geometry up a bit, we have lost a lot of resolution on these stretched out areas. That's where the resample comes in. It adds more geometry. Now this, because high field is in terms of volumes, it's all volumes. So we, there is no like we topologize this or anything. It's there's grid spacing is what I'm trying to say. Height field uses grid spacing to define the resolution of this volume of this height field by making it 0.5. I've lowering the grid spacing. I have given it more resolution to this to my height field. Now let's take a look at what is the resolution before the resample and after the resample. So before the resample, we we that's this one. Oops, that's this one. We have 500 by 500 by 1. So it's it only contains 250,000 voxels. But after we resample it, we have 2,000 by 2,000 by 1. We have 4 million voxels. We have a higher resolution. The more voxels, the higher the resolution. And we can really push. We can really add a lot more detail to this high terrain. The high field erosion node. I'm just going to talk about the erosion node for a second. And then I'll come back to the high field resample. High field erode. What this does is... It's a simulation node. This node will simulate how terrain erodes over time. Natural erosion, like how wind over hundreds and thousands of years changes the shape of rocks. Or how water has eaten into the rocks or volcanic reaction has changed the terrain of a landscape. That's what this tries to simulate. It tries to simulate what this terrain will look over time. Our time being this timeline. So just drop it down, put the render flag on here, and you'll see a bunch of color apply to it. This is not actually, this is only for visualization purposes. And after you drop this down here, you have to go to the, uh, you should go to the visualization tab, press the compute range for more accurate display so this is a more accurate display of the height ramp it applies this color coding ramp onto your height field this is a, only for visualization purposes let's go back to the erosion so i'm just gonna after you drop down the erosion just just play it that's how this node works just play it and it'll, you'll start to see the terrain change so you're, just, you're starting to see these lines form, the river, uh, the water starting to form down here, and the terrain is starting to change. It, it, start, it looks like it's deteriorating, it's eroding. So that's what this node does, it tries to simulate that. Now I think side effects suggests that you go to frame 20. If you don't, I, I believe you don't need to go beyond frame 20 for erosion, but you can if you want. But frame 20 should be enough for every uh, any kind of erosion. You, sh you should really get what you need out of it by then. So I'm going to stop it at 21. And it's important to check this box. If you don't check this box, you're going to uh, lose all this all this data, all this erosion data. Now, after you check it, it freezes it at this. It freezes it at this frame. So you can, this is uh, locked on. This is locked onto this frame. I believe it's using a time shift underneath it. Not totally sure. I, to lock it onto this frame. So if I change, uh, the timeline it doesn't change the erosion stays there so that's what the erosion does now you can see that there's a lot more detail added to the height field 
Now I'm just going to go over the parameters in just a second. Now this is where I want, uh, right after the high field erosion, you should really put down a file cache. Why? Because it took time. It took a bit of time to cook this. If you don't put down a file cache, you're going to have to recook it every single time. Like every single time you reopen the hip file, it's going to have to recook. And th that might be okay if you, you have one erosion at frame 20. But what if you have like 10 erosions layered on top of each other? That becomes quite a bit of problem. So I'm going to put give it a name. Um, high field erosion. Oops. Now, this file cache, I don't need to save the range. This this is ridiculous. I don't need that range. I only need one frame. And it's time shifted already. Like, it's frozen at frame 21. So I only need to file cache frame 1. So we're going to change. Go to the file cache. Oops, file cache. Change this to save current frame. And remove this dollar sign $F. Because we don't need it. And dollar sign hip name will make this geometry file, um, this file cache, the name of your hip file, which is this, which is for me, it's hype field version four tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Now remember to check this. Otherwise, it won't automatically load the next time you uh, click on the node. Okay, and I'm going to save it now. Let's go back to the resample. Now, this is already giving it more resolution. I'm going to cook. Uh, I'm going to copy this node. I'm going to apply the same erosion node without before the resample. So this has less resolution. This is 500 by 500. It has less resolution compared to the high field that has a resample. This is by 2000 by 2000. So I'm applying erosion on the 500 by 500 resolution high field. So this is what it looks like at frame 21. Now I'm going to freeze it, select the erosion, freeze it at frame 21. And again, it's important to file cache it. Because I don't want to keep recooking it every single time. Erosion 2. Save current frame. Remove the dollar sign F. Check load from disk. And then click save to disk. So now we, oops, we have this. This is the 500 by 500 voxels. We still have a lower resolution. We st we're still do dealing with the 250,000 voxels. So this is a lower resolution compared to the exact same erosion node over here that has higher resolution. You can see there's a lot more detail. Look at these areas. I'm going to turn on the erosion here. Now, those details aren't there anymore. So it's important to know that after you apply noise to the height field layer over here, this is where we applied noise A and noise B to this height field layer. It stretched it up. It stretched all these uh, areas up. So we need more resolution afterwards. After you, you sort of stretch it all up. I, it's sort of like topology. Once you stretch, inflate, or, or stretch a geometry, you need more polygons, you need more topology. It's sort of the same thing. But this is in terms of voxels. So we need more voxels. And we do that by uh, slapping down a height field resample node. This will give us way more voxels. So now we have 4 million voxels to work with compared to the 250,000. Here, that we have all these parameters. I'm not going to go over all of these parameters. I am going to go over a few of them, though. I'm going to be making this file available for you. So I just wanted to organize it a bit. So there's your erosion 1, erosion 2. Let's go back here. Let's put another erosion. I'm going to reset it back to the timeline one. So let's focus on here. Again, the display is messed up. So we select the erosion, visualization, 
compute. You don't have to do this. Again, this is only for visualization purposes. What I wanted to show you, if you go to the road, go click the advanced tab and under precipitation, so that's rainfall, I'm gonna um, turn on the mask. So there's this drop down here, mask on and off. I'm gonna turn it on and it gives us more UI selections. I'm gonna press this add precipitation paint. What this does, so let's click it. Now, if I hover my mouse over here, my mouse has turned into uh, Houdini's paintbrush. This is what it looks like for Houdini's paintbrush. It's a big circle. My mouse has turned into a paintbrush on the th if I hover my mouse over the 3D viewport. And also, in the node network, it has created two nodes. It's just placed it all over the place. So I'm just going to drag it out. It's right here. And this create precipitation. So these two no new nodes get created after I press that um, uh, paint button, this paint precipitation button. It creates these two nodes. Let's put our select the mass paint. We get a paintbrush and when we hover our muscle over the 3D viewport. Let's put the render flag on the paint in order to visualize what we're painting. So I'm going to paint a bit up here. It indicates to the erosion, it tells the erosion that I want this to be water. I want you to start off the simulation by having this as water, as this as precipitation water. So let's put the render flag back to the erosion node. Now, side effects automatically connects it to the masking for us. So it does all that for us. We don't have to worry about that. All we have to do is just paint it, go back to the erosion and just play the, play the simulation. Sorry. So I don't know what happened there. So I had to recreate this erosion node. Uh, let me put highlight in purple. Okay. Let me cook it again. As you can see, this erosion, it doesn't have any water anymore. The, the water's not there. It's not showing up. After we painted the precipitation, the water's not showing up. It actually takes a bit, because we start off the simulation with less water than what was compared to our previous one. So if I go over here, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put down a file cache. So if we compare it over here, this started off with a lot more water. It erodes the entire terrain with more precipitation. Precipitation is happening everywhere. But for this one, we only want, we indicate that precipitation, we only want it here, this area to start here. So it takes a lot more to erode it because there's less water to erode. With more water, it'll erode faster. Like so what we can do to speed up the erosion without having precipitation everywhere, like I only want precipitation in that painted spot of the terrain, we can actually control it is where I'm getting at. We can increase the precipita precipitation amount. So I'm going to increase this from 0.2 to 0.8. And I'm going to decrease... Oh, it's starting to cook. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to decrease the evaporation rate. That's this one. So this is the rate that the water evaporates. I'm going to decrease this to like 1.01. .01. Remember to uncheck this before you start restart the erosion. Okay. So after modifying those parameters, at frame 21, I get erosion right away. Like I get the water precipitation right away. So this might be an effect that you want. Maybe you only want water here. You're, it could be a lava. It could be a, vol, uh, a volcano. This could be a volcano and this could be larva popping out of the volcano, blowing up uh, the vo a volcano eruption. And these erosion lines are from all the volcano eruptions over the past hundreds of years or so. This will give you a lot of control over the erosion. So I'm going to save this. 
You can also decrease the bank angle. So let's do that. So we have all this. I'm going to do one more type. So it's the same version with the same parameter changes to it. Except I'm going to decrease the bank angle. So this in select erode, go to the main tab and go under hydro, the hydro section, the bank angle. I'm going to decrease this. I'm going to make it 10. So all I did was just copy this paint because I don't want to repaint it. I want this exact same paint spot. So I'm going to delete the original one. Erosion number three and four have the exact same parameters other than the bank angle. The bank angle has been decreased. Or now, now it's been decreased. And I'm going to resim it. I'm going to play it. Okay, finally, lock it here. I'm going to save it. Erosion number three here and erosion number four has the same erosion parameters or the result of the erosion with same erosion parameters except for the bank, the bank angle in the hydro section. This has been decreased. So we can compare this these valleys, they're a lot thinner. These are more thicker. The, 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 the bank angle is uh, spread. The rivers or, or this um, water erosion is more spread out. So that's what this bank angle does. Because the erosion is a beast, it's huge. It's very overwhelming with a lot of different parameters. You can control exactly how it erodes. But if you keep, if you only change one parameter at a time and keep caching it for every single one, you can really see what the parameter does. So you can, using trial and error, you can determine for yourself what, what each parameter does. It is a little time consuming, but because the erosion is such, there's so many parameters. This is one way that you can trial and error to find the effect that you want. And I will make this uh, Houdini file available so you can use this for reference. Mm. I'm just going to organize this a bit. So this is the, all the erosion type stuff I've... Now this is the one I'm going to be using. Now this one I have cached. But I want to show you the parameters. These are just default parameters. I don't think I changed anything. Yeah, these are default parameters. Didn't change anything. Uh, I did erode it to frame 60 because I wanted to see what it would look like at frame 60 with defaults. So this is what I get. I just cached out. There's no painted precipitation. As you can see, this mask here is empty. There's no input going in here. Now, there's something in height fields called terracing. And what that does, it just creates steps in the erosion. If you look carefully enough, you're starting to see it stepping. It's a good idea to create some sort of noise to sort of seed the erosion. Because erosion, if we have a flat plane, if we have like this, and I feed this directly into the erosion, I don't think anything interest, nothing interesting will happen. Nothing will happen because there's nothing to erode. It's a flat plane. Everything just, there is no shape for it to erode. There's no curvature. There's no shape. There's no displacement or anything. So you need something to see the erosion. And terracing is actually really nice for that. For the examples, for the four different types of erosion that I've demonstrated, um, we have this noise here that is seeding that provides uh, some of the seeding for the erosion so it can erode there's curvature for it to erode on here here I have terracing so I throw down some terracing I want steps everywhere I want steps to appear everywhere here I decrease the step size down to 10 so if I increase this 
You can see that it, it gets really big. This step size is like huge. I'm going to stick with 10. If you press the compute range, it will fill in these two parameters. So if you had something like this. So it'll only step this, the highlighted areas. But I want to step everything. After I uh, added some terracing, I throw down a height field mass clear. So I clear out the, the selection. Let's see, I don't need that resample. So I throw down some more erode. This is the default settings, the default parameters of the erosion. I get this. So compared to what I had before, the ter this is before the terracing and before the another erosion. This. Now, if you're happy with your height field and you want to like export it out, start using this height field, for, flood this terrain with water, or apply it to a simulation, or well, right now it's still a volume. We're, we're still in volume. We're still in the height field uh, world. It's uh, there's something called a height field convert node. What this will do. It converts it into a polygon or a VDB, whatever you want. And it can extrude the base. Now, I'm not going to put the render flag here because it takes a while to render. I do have 4 million uh, voxels. I did cache it out ahead of time, so I'm going to do this, show you this one. So it has an extruded base. So what this height field does, it can extrude the base for you so you have something on the bottom. Because if, you, if you've seen my uh, previous tutorials about the flip fluid collisions, you need thick um, geometry. You need geometry that is thick in order for the flip collisions to properly simulate. Otherwise, the flip solver won't know what to do because of the, the polygon, if the polygons are too thin. So this is now a polygon. After you throw this down and convert it into a polygon, it, this is a polygon. And this polygon has 8 million points. Pretty heavy in my opinion. So you throw down a poly reduce. And I'm reducing it to 10%. Now I'm not going to put the render flag here because this takes a while to cook as well. I did cache it out ahead of time. So I put down a file cache here. After the poly reduce has been finished this is 439,733 points which is a significant reduction compared to before the poly reduce which is 8 million points to less than half a million points so this is way more compact and if you look carefully there's not much change the trick is getting at the balance there's not much difference between the two. So you don't lose much visually, which and you get it more compact. However, you do have to play around with this, like to test the waters. Keep going lower um, in the poly reduce until you start to see it. Like try 50% and see what it looks like. Then try 25% and see what it looks like. And then 10%, keep going lower. But don't create, like, don't don't keep copying this node, like, go, like, poly reduce, and then, okay, I'm going to try 50% here, and then copy, paste it over here, and try, uh, so you try 50 here, and then you copy and paste, and put it here, okay, I'm going to try 25 here, don't do that, because, uh, run it the first time, it takes a long time to analyze the geometry. So that's the heavy lifting, and it only does it once. So once you start changing it the second time, you'll notice that it won't reduce, it won't take as long to poly reduce it. However, if you keep copying the node, it might lose the internal cache. So I suggest 
if you are trying it, just put down one poly reduce, try 50%. Okay, you don't like it, then change it again here. The second time, you'll notice that it's a lot faster because it doesn't have to analyze the geometry. And after you're done with it and you, you're, you're happy with what it looks like, remember, remember to put down a file cache. And as I showed before, change it to save current frame, remove the dollar sign F. So if you're happy with what you have as the height field terrain right here, if you're happy with this, th this is your polygon. Like you're, this is done. I have an upcoming video that will continue from this height field scene file and demonstrate how to generate tunnel holes within your terrain. If you want a cave, a tunnel for trains to travel through a mountain range, or a cavern you want to generate in your height field terrain, the next video will show you how to use the VDB combine node and hull out areas in the height field. Please stay tuned for that upcoming soon. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.